Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and guys today I'm going to show you how to make an external preloader and when I say an external preloader basically what I mean is that usually uh, you may have seen a lot of uh, reference to uh, a lot of literature or you may have seen tutorials where you actually create an extra frame uh, before um, you know it's usually the first frame on the timeline where you place the preloader script okay and then everything else follows so basically you have to push it by one frame towards the right to accommodate for the preloader okay but this script that we, we're gonna discuss uh, in a little while make sure that you write uh, the script in a separate uh, flow file uh, all you need to make sure is that the, the flow file and the swift which will be connected ultimately are in the same folder on your uh, local hard disk or on the server okay and um, so you don't need to uh, you know you keep that extra frame for the preloader uh, and not only that uh, the best part is that it's easier to write this this code is uncomplicated it's, it's much simpler as we'll soon see all right guys before I actually uh, uh, discuss the action script with you and show you how to do it let me show you a published preview by hitting control enter on my keyboard to test the movie as we technically call it so that, that's a control enter okay I need to hit control enter once again to uh, simulate uh, the download so that's control enter twice right guys right so I'll tell you uh, what happened out here let me uh, show you my desktop out here on the desktop guys we have a swift file which is typewriter effect now this was uh, yet another of my tutorial if you actually like the effect you can uh, type my name you can type uh, you know followed by a space and then write uh, typewriter effect <coughs> sorry and you'll get uh, at least three tutorials on the same subject I was so intrigued so interested in uh, making this anyways so what is happening out here is that this is the swift file okay uh, that we are creating a preloader for it's lying on the desktop okay the flaw file this flaw file which I have called external PL PL for preloader I've also saved on the same location which is the desktop right and uh, let's see what all we have on the stage on the stage uh, we have a UI loader component a user interface loader component and where did I get it from I got it from uh, here uh, see under the components under the user interface I have this option to pull out a UI loader component like so okay I pulled it out I made sure that I tucked it in the uh, left top corner let me delete it <coughs> since we already have one so uh, the easiest way to tuck it in the left, left top corner is to go to the properties panel and make sure that your uh, X and Y coordinates are actually set to zero each okay then guys I gave it an instance name and uh, I called it UI loader with a with a capital L okay because I would want to reference uh, it in my uh, action script cool also guys uh, have a look here in the component uh, parameters I made sure that the scale content was set to was set off was checked off was ticked off okay and the source guys is the same as the typewriter effect dot swift which is uh, the f this file lying on the desktop to which I actually want to connect the the preloader right and uh, what else we have out here on the stage on the stage guys we have this rectangular structure uh, the instance name of which I've called PL PL for preloader short for preloader okay and uh, how did I make it I actually use the uh, rectangle rec 
rectangular primitive tool rectangle primitive tool shortcut key R of Roger okay and I drew it out <coughs> right I've, I've used a radial gradient but that's not compulsory you could you could have it uh, completely solid without a gradient as well that's absolutely fine and yes guys it's very very important that you keep the registration point uh, to the left it could be left uh, top could be left center could be left bottom but it should be uh, left right okay and uh, so, so that's a movie clip with the registration point top left okay and out here we have a text field now you can create uh, your own text field by hitting the text tool shortcut key TT for tango okay and um, I gave it an instance name uh, status underscore txt guys have a look out here that uh, it's been set to classic and dynamic dynamic because the text is gonna change it's gonna change every single moment okay the text color obviously will be uh, something pretty light because the background is dark the background is a uh, a pound sign triple three triple three so I kept the uh, the font color to a white I made sure that I set the font embedding option I, I clicked on this embed button and uh, <coughs> I made sure that I have uh, actually embedded all the character ranges sure okay and uh, the font size is 27 but but that's entirely up to you that's a personal preference right so all that we have on the stage is a UI loader component instance name UI loader okay making sure that the scale content is off and the source of the external Swift file that I want to load typed out here uh, make sure that you write the extension dot Swift SWF as well okay we have this rectangular bar which I've called PL and we have the status underscore txt right we have to have the instance name for all these three components guys because I will be referencing them in the AS3 action script 3 okay let me open up the actions panel for you guys okay let me expand this area all right okay guys uh, let's see what we have done out here I've created a variable percent done of the type number but I have not given it a value which I'll do a little later which I've done a little, uh, done a little later okay that's that's absolutely alright it's okay to declare a variable uh, initially and then later on uh, give it a value which is absolutely uh, okay now guys I've added to the UI loader component, the user interface loader component, two uh, event listeners, one of the type complete and the other of the type progress. Okay, and uh, respectively, they fire off uh, two functions called complete handler and progress handler. Let's first understand uh, what uh, exactly happens when you fire the 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 complete handler. Okay. Uh, when the <coughs> uh, complete hand basically when the loading gets complete in the UI loader the UI loader is like a container in, in which the, the the Swift gets loaded and when that is done when that is true then we make sure that we remove the PL PL is the preloader that green colored uh, uh, radial gradient bar we remove it completely Okay, we don't need it anymore of course and let's see what exactly goes uh, what happens in the progress handler the uh, the progress handler is the event while the 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 uh, the the UI loader is in the process of loading the the uh, external Swift while the progress is on okay uh, let's see what happens. I've created. If you remember, guys, I had declared a variable percentage or percent done. I, I'm making it equal to event dot bias loaded. Now the event is a progress event, and uh, through the bias loaded and the bias total property, I can actually retrieve the number of bytes that have been loaded in the UI loader uh, component. Okay. 
guys I could have very well replaced this event by the UI loader that's absolutely all right in fact uh, let me show it to you let me do a copy out here and a paste out here okay and a paste out here as well and it's still uh, the script would fire off uh, just as good just as fine so let me hit control enter to approve my point there you go control enter twice to simulate the download guys and uh, it works just as effectively <coughs> cool uh, okay uh, have a look out here guys uh, once the once I compute the percentage done okay once I compute the percent percent done I make sure that my PL is uh, scaled on the x-axis through the scale X property in accordance with the percentage done or percent done and this percent done will always be a value between uh, 0 and 1 you can always check it guys it's always between 0 and 1 right so from a minimum size to a max size that is what will be uh, showing through to the uh, user to the viewer okay and guys through the following uh, formula okay percentage done into 100 uh, and then two fixed now through the two fixed zero I'm making sure that I am uh, removing the fraction part I'm making sure that no decimal numbers show through only the whole number you can do it through two fixed zero zero means no decimal number two means that you can actually see two uh, decimal numbers after the whole number okay so making sure that it's an integer I'm multiplying it with the hundred make sure that you get the percentage and then I'm displaying the uh, message percent loaded after that number that needs to be shown through in the status underscore txt text field which is a dynamic text field, classic dynamic. Make sure it's dynamic, guys. It's very, very important. Okay, and uh, <coughs> actually, it'll be a good idea if I come out here and uh, once the the whole thing is done, make sure that the string is an empty string. Okay, actually, out here, the the uh, status underscore txt uh, is actually going under the UI loader, but uh, you never know it might show up uh, above the the swift so just to be on the safe side just to be on the safe side I'm making sure that I'm uh, I'm removing anything inside the text field just in case it might show up uh, on your system on your computer so I'll make it null okay so I'm, I'm gonna hit control enter and uh, show you uh, the published preview once again of how to create an external uh, preloader there goes control enter once and twice to simulate the download Alright guys, so um, let me quickly just uh, tell you what all we have done. Uh, we created uh, two event listeners, added it to the UI loader component, the user interface component. Okay, one was of the type complete, the other of uh, the type progress. Okay, respectively, uh, they removed the child PL. PL is the preloader. Uh, I made sure that the status underscore, uh, underscore txt text field actually goes blank once the event is complete and as far as the progress handler is concerned I can have UI loader replaced by event event is nothing but the progress event uh, and then we can through the bytes loaded and the bytes total properties retrieve the amount of download that is uh, you know the amount of uh, bytes that have been actually loaded and I'm, I can scale the PL the preloader through the scale X property and uh, make it show from the size min to a max uh, right and then I can reflect the percentage loaded uh, in the status underscore txt text field guys this text field is classic dynamic make sure it's set to classic dynamic make sure you embed the font guys right 
so guys i hope you like this tutorial you enjoyed it uh, and i hope to see you very soon with yet another flash on dreamviewer tutorial you have a good day guys bye bye peace